the cloud data store and how we can store data, we're going to look at how we can actually retrieve data using the cloud data store. One of the things that we're going to always need to do is obviously uh, save user input or save something that we save some calculation, something that we, we need to persist over different sessions or different uh, accesses to our site by users. But we're also going to have to access that data. We're going to have to pull it in and do something interesting with it. So data store queries allow us to do this. Uh, queries basically allow us to access persisted data, the data that's in that data store system. Uh, we're going to use filter as part of this to, to find data and to access data in different you know with different uh, matching properties and this is going to pull the the data from that data store into your Python application now one of the questions a lot of people ask is you know why not just retrieve everything like why not just have a really simple data storage system and handle all of your processing in Python and Flask and there's there's a couple of reasons why we don't want to do that um, one is that data store is optimized to handle the queries that we need to perform so uh, data store stores our data in a particular way it indexes our data it allows us to access that data a little bit more efficiently than we could do by you know moving all of that data around you know moving data has some cost to it it's bandwidth it's computing uh, and it's memory so I think that all of those things mean that if we just pulled in a ton of data you know you start off you might store a few megabytes but then your data grows to gigabytes your data might grow even further to terabytes and you end up with something that is uh, extremely large uh, you know and that moving that kind of data around into your application is gonna take time and it's gonna have have, uh, it, it's going to cost some of your system's resources, and that time is actually not very good. You know, if you're going to, if you want to access a, a web page, typically most people have the patience of about a second or two. So anything that's going to slow that down is generally not going to lead to a good user experience. The other reason is costs. When you're working in a cloud environment, you do want to think about the costs, and you know there are different costs for different use of resources. You have uh, storage is going to cost something, compute is going to cost something, memory will have costs, uh, you know network bandwidth will have costs. All of these things have costs. So compute and app engine is probably uh, less expensive. Or, I'm sorry, Compute and App Engine is probably more expensive than Compute and Data Store. Uh, data Store is really built to access and retrieve this data. Uh, and you know, you also save money by not having to move all of that data around and store it in memory. So cost is another good reason. You know, you want to think about those monetary costs when you're working in a uh, cloud environment because you know it's it's not like uh, you own the resources. It's not like you own the power and everything. So trying to reduce that is generally a good idea as a developer. And the other reason is less code. You, you know, these queries, these filters that we'll use. Use, they will uh, use less code than if you were to pull in a bunch of data, use for loops or while loops to iterate through that data, modify things, update things, remove things from your data set. Uh, all of that would be a, it would be probably several lines of code, lots of logic, whereas a filter is going to be a little bit more simple and condensed. And pretty much the only time it's good to use less or more code over less code is if you can use more code to make your code more understandable by future users or future readers of that code. Uh, but in this case, I think it's probably a lot more understandable to just use the queries and filters that are available. So data store queries, uh, they start with a kind. Remember, kind is the type of the, the entity that we're accessing. Uh, you can add filters to your queries. You can add ordering to your queries. And then you, you get that information or get the, the data associated with that query with query.fetch. So on the right here, you can see an example. We're going to construct a query using uh, the client, data store client. And we're going to use this for a task entity. Uh, and we're going to add a filter with a property for done. And we're gonna, we want to get everything where done is equal to false. So basically, we're going to say we're going to get all of the tasks that are not done. Uh, and then we're going to add another filter. We have a priority property here and where that's greater than or equal to four. So the idea there is that we're going to retrieve all of the tasks that are not done and have a priority uh, that is greater than or equal to four. So here you can see then uh, on the last line, we're, we're setting the order equal to reverse order by priority. So this will show this will start with the highest priority items and, and give us the uh, tasks task entities back in reverse order for, uh, by priority. So when we fetch this, we should get a, a, a collection of data uh, that will be will have some order uh, by prior by reverse pri or reverse order by priority. So this query can be used to, you know, if you think about how you would actually run that code, if you were running all of the Python, you'd have to get all of the query, all of the task objects. You'd have to use a for loop to check to see where done was false. You'd have to use, you'd have to have another if statement to see where priority is greater than or equal to four. You'd have to remove everything from that list uh, that was uh, not matching those. You'd have to sort it by negative. So like you've, you've got a lot of tasks here, uh, which you can kind of just, uh, all of that is, is handled by the data store, um, the data store system. 
So one other thing that you're gonna need is an index.yaml file, and the index allows you to organize the data in a way that makes it easier to look up. So uh, in, in Cloud Data Store, not all data is indexed. Uh, and if you think about that, that makes sense. Indexing and, and managing an index, index maintaining an index, uh, is gonna have some costs associated with it. So you only wanna index what's necessary. And in your index.yaml file, uh, you will have a type, of a type of entity, your kind, and and then you'll identify whether it's an ancestor query. Uh, you probably won't need ancestor queries, but they allow you to, you know, uh, to associate a query with one of the. It's sort of like an owner entities, the the ancestor entity. And then you identify the properties that you want to use as part of a query. So you can use name uh, is done and name is priority. So this first uh, first index here is going to kind of support that previous slide uh, code. So where you had, uh, we were doing a, a filter by done and we were doing a filter by priority. So you can kind of see how that, that corresponds. Um, the name is the property that you're going to use to match and then the direction is the, the sort order for, for this particular uh, type or particular kind of entity. And you can kind of see some other ones. You know, the second uh, index is going to tell you for task entities, uh, we're going to have a collaborators uh, property um, and that's going to be organized by an ascending order and then we'll have a created entity and that will be uh, organized in descending order so it's probably another uh, task to retrieve information based on a particular set of users and particular uh, creation date um, and then you have a list you know of tasks so you might have a percent complete property we're accessing and then a type of you know task list so you can kind of see how that corresponds now the good news is um, you don't actually have to to use this index.yaml, you don't have to write it. If you perform the test necessary uh, in using a cloud data store emulator, that will be generated for you. And the index.yaml, it's not complicated, but it's you know it's a little tedious to have to write that. So what you can do instead is you can write your data store code and you can connect to the cloud data store emulator, and that will prevent you from having to one from having to use the production version of data store. Uh, you know, one thing you could do is you could create several different data stores and you could use one as production and one as just testing or development purposes but probably using the uh, the cloud data store emulator is a little bit way of a smart or smarter way to go and uh, we're going to show you how that's going to work in just a moment um, but you know the, the data store emulator will generate the index.yaml file for you and uh, in the next video we're going to get into how to create retrieve update and delete data using uh, using the flask python html css and the google cloud data store uh, hopefully that'll give you some insights in how you can use this in your own applications uh, for now thank you for watching